So different vehicles and things like power stations have different fuel efficiencies. Trucks, for example, are 45% efficient, but you can see some unburned fuel coming out of the exhaust. Jets, 70% efficient, so 70% of the energy you put in as fuel is usable. Chainsaws, I couldn't find any data on that, but they're noisy, hot, and there's a lot of unburnt fuel coming out of the exhaust. Combined heat and power stations have some of the highest fuel efficiencies. And why is that? Well, because the hot water that they use to cool the power station down with, instead of just being pumped into the local river, is pumped around people's houses. And so that's a good use of that so-called waste energy. And there are three energy equations that you need to know for C1. But what is energy? Energy is the ability to do work. So what is work? Work is force times distance. So what is force? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's back off here. That's all physics. Don't worry about that. Energy density is measured in potentially kilojoules, maybe kilojoules per decimeter cubed. Specific energy, kilojoules per gram, maybe kilogram. And the efficiency of energy transfer, that's going to be percentage. Now, the top two of those equations are in the data booklet, which you're allowed to have during the options. But you have to remember the efficiency one. Essentially, output over input times 100. So you can see those very, very tiny fuel pellets. They have an enormous amount of energy in a small mass and volume. But compare that to the gas bag buses of old, where there was very little energy per unit volume. And this can be compared using specific energy, which is energy per kilogram, and energy density, which is energy per volume. You can see that uranium has very high values for those two. Lots and lots of energy in a small mass and a small volume. So if you look at hydrogen, you'll notice that there's lots of energy per gram but not much energy per litre. It's really hard to squash hydrogen down into a small volume. It does not want to liquefy. Another comparison, uh, gasoline versus ethanol. A lot of people think that ethanol might be better to run your car. Well, looking at those numbers, it really isn't. Gasoline has more energy per unit mass and more energy per unit volume. But of course, you could argue that ethanol is in some way a renewable resource. And let's go down to the absolute worst one, an electrostatic capacitor. Well, I'm sure even though that has awful figures, it's still very useful in electronic equipment. Better than a gasoline engine would be in electronic equipment, of course. Okay, so let's look at a question. Calculate the specific energy, energy density, and efficiency from the following data. Use the data booklet also. So there we have the density of ethanol, and the fact that a mole of ethanol produces that much energy in an engine. So let's calculate the specific energy first. So specific energy equals the uh, energy released from the fuel. Now the trick for this is if you get the heat of combustion data, the change in the enthalpy or the heat of combustion at standard temperature and pressure and divide that by the molar mass, which is capital M, that gives you the specific energy. So from the data booklet, I've got minus 1367 kilojoules per mole for the heat of combustion. And the molar mass for ethanol is 46.08 grams per mole. And you'll notice that that and that cancels, giving me kilojoules per gram, which I can convert into megajoules per kilogram. Now, what about this minus? Well, keep it in, take it out, doesn't really matter. This minus just means the energy is released. Uh, if you forget to put it in, it doesn't matter. The IB aren't going to assume it's suddenly endothermic, it's fuel, you'll be fine. So let's do the calculation. 1367, that's got four sig figs, divided by 46.08, also four sig figs. And that gives me 
29.67 for sig figs kilojoules per mole idiot kilojoules per gram now the question wants it in megajoules per kilogram alrighty so to turn the kilojoules into megajoules well a thousand kilojoules is one megajoule now to fix the grams to kilograms I've got a thousand grams is one kilogram alrighty now everything should cancel out beautifully just leaving megajoules per kilogram kilojoule gone with kilojoule grams gone with gram rather delightfully that thousand goes with that thousand just leaving me with megajoules per kilogram so in fact it's the same number 29.67 megajoules per kilogram and we're done with the first part so there is an equation that links energy density specific energy and density together and here it is let me just prove it to you divided by the volume of the fuel now if this is an equation what's on this side should equal what's on that side that's what the equal sign means if I cross out this and this which I'm allowed to do because it appears at the bottom and the top we've got energy released on both sides at the top and volume of fuel at the bottom so let's do that calculation then energy density is well what is the specific energy we just work that out 29.67 megajoules per kilogram let's make that a bit lower energy density is 29.67 megajoules per kilogram now I don't want the megajoules I need kilojoules because that's what the answer is here so I'm going to get rid of my megajoules turn it into kilojoules I know that a thousand kilojoules is one megajoule and I can just cancel those out excellent let's deal with the density now so the mass of the fuel over the volume of the fuel but I've actually got the density value here so it's 0 0.789 grams per centimeter cubed so I've got my kilogram gram problem I need to fix that and centimeters cubed I want it in decimeters cubed let's get rid of the grams first so I have one kilogram is a thousand grams and let's deal with the centimeters decimeters problem and I know that a thousand centimeters cubed is one decimeter cubed let's put those in brackets because it's the second part so what can I get rid of here grams are gone with grams centimeters cubed with centimeters cubed that kilogram goes with that kilogram and while we're at it let's get rid of that thousand and that thousand so finally I should just have kilojoules at the top yep and at the bottom I just want decimeters cubed to give me that unit so let's do that calculation so it's going to be 29.67 multiplied by a thousand multiplied by 0.789 there's nothing below the calculator everything else is cancelled so that's going to give me well I've got plenty of sig figs here but I only need three sig figs in my answer even though there's four sig figs here you've got to take the part of the question with the least sig figs to inform your answer so that's going to be 23,400 so it's going to be 23,400 and we have worked hard to get it into kilojoules per decimeter cubed And so let's work out the efficiency from this data here. Let's pop this here. Alrighty, so uh, efficiency.
So I know that one mole of ethanol produces 547 kilojoules of output energy. So I'm going to put 547 kilojoules per mole. So that means my input energy is also going to have to be in kilojoules per mole. Now where am I going to find that? The energy of one mole of ethanol in the IB data booklet, copyright IB. I think this is version three. The other ones have so many mistakes in them. Alrighty, so, oh, I wish I hadn't moved it now. So if we look here, heat of combustion, kilojoules per mole, and down to ethanol. Minus 1367 kilojoules per mole. So 1367 kilojoules per mole. Well, that's a good job. Those per moles cancel. And now I do indeed have energy output just in kilojoules and energy input just in kilojoules. Don't worry about the minus, leave it in, don't leave it in. The IV doesn't care, I don't care. The negative just means the energy is released. Let's do the calculation. 547 divided by 1367 is 40. Now I've got three sig figs, four sig figs, so let's go with three sig figs. So you can't just put 40, you have to put 40.0%. So that is the efficiency of the engine, and we're done with this. So calculate the specific energy of the fuel and use the data booklet to show that it is octane. All right, a 45% efficient engine releases 7,570 kilojoules using 500 milliliters of fuel. This curly P uh, means density. It's unclear whether you need to know that sign for the syllabus. And that's the density of the fuel. So specific energy, that is uh, energy over mass for the fuel. And we don't really have either of those. And so here's the workings to get the answer. This is the number you get from the question. And if you crunch the data from the data booklet, that's the answer you get from the data booklet. And so since the two start answers are the same, uh, I've shown that it's octane. But you probably have to write a sentence of explanation for our beloved IB.